Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? It is currently, I think it's like 6.20. Hold on a second. It is currently up 6.20 p.m. on Saturday evening. It is really chilly outside right now. Alex just left to go to the Dead Mouse concert with Sarah. And he's meeting some other friends there. It is currently... It says it's 57 degrees outside. It does not feel like it's 57. It says it's 57, feels like 55, and there is a frost advisory tonight. Let's see, it's supposed to get down to, last night it got into the 30s. Tonight it's supposed to get into the 30s as well with a low of 35 at 8 a.m. And then it's supposed to go up again. So tomorrow it's supposed to be a high of 66, and then Monday, 73, Tuesday, 75, Wednesday, 73, and then down into the 60s. 60 on Thursday, 58 on Friday, and then 60, 61. It's going to just be cold. <laughs> the cold is here, and for my cold, I have my pumpkin cream cold brew that I got today. So, how are you guys doing? I've had a really active, productive day. Woke up and did some stuff around the house. And then Alex was like in bed and he was like watching TikToks and just kind of hanging out and relaxing. And then he um, was playing Township and stuff like that. And then I got up and um, started getting ready. And then we went to Costco. Costco was like super busy. It's weird because you would think that Costco is busy on the weekends. But I have found that it's actually not super busy on the weekends, typically. <laughs> um, typically, like, the busiest days are, like, weird days. Like, Wednesdays and Thursday afternoons, like, in the middle of the week that you wouldn't think about. Fridays are, like, when Caroline and I have gone on Fridays, it hasn't been too bad. Um, but today, it was packed. Like, it was slammed. I couldn't believe it. And, like, right when we walked in, it was, like, super, super busy. Um... They had all of these house plants that were really cool. So if you're looking for new house plants and you have a Costco card go, or membership, go check out the house plants at Costco. Um, they had really big ones. Like we got a big one for our house that um, Alex got me one for Christmas. It's probably like three feet tall. And he paid, I don't know, some ridiculous amount of money to have it like sent here. Um, it's on this like plant website that I, I wanted these plants from because they come in these... Uh, they come in these things where it's like the soil is on top and then the plant is always like in water. And so you just fill it with water, fill it with water. Um, I will say this, that the plants have lasted a really long time and I haven't really had to take care of them at all, except for just to continue to fill up the base with water. So we'll just see how this other plant does, which is very similar to that plant. It's just a little bit shorter, but the plant was $22. And I have found that like buying plants, like Christmas plants, mums, which I didn't get my mums from, um, what do you call it, from Costco this year, but plants in general from Costco, they're really cheap and they're really like nice plants. So the mums that I got, um, I watered them once and it rained once and they're actually doing really nice. Like they're doing really, really well. Like this one you can see is still really doing well and the ones out there look really nice. My white one at the end over there this white one looks great too, but the white one over there on the end um, is like getting like this really round shape to it, which I like. So anyway, we went to Costco and got like Diet Coke and Coke and then Alex got some um, seltzers to take over to his friend's house tonight because they're going over there first before the concert. And then um, I got like peanut brittle and then I got those apple cider donuts that I loved. And then we went to Fresh Time because I wanted to get some stuff to make dinner tonight. I didn't know what, I kind of just got some random stuff because I was like, I don't know if I want a sandwich or if I want soup or, so I got all kinds of stuff. I actually did a haul on my Peter Does Stuff channel showing everything that I bought. So you can go over there and see that, you, including the plant. Um, I don't know when that will be posted. Last night, um, I was having a really hard time posting my vlog. So let me tell you, actually YouTube put out a statement on Twitter. Um, I was like on one of those little conversation things, um, like a chat with YouTube conversation thing, whatever. 
for like over an hour last night trying to fix my vlog channel because none of my videos were showing up with the monetization icon on it and it looked like my ent entire channel like had no monetization on it which is fine but here's the deal like if your videos aren't monetized then they sometimes don't go to the people that are still like subscribe to your channel or they don't show to new people and things like that right and so the videos move slower and um so i was waiting to get that fixed so what's so interesting is a lot of people today have been saying something about it like for example hold on a second where is this? So YouTube put out the statement and they said, hey creators, looking into your tweets reports about monetization being turned off on your videos, we'll share another update soon. Oh, the other thing is that often, if they're off, like, and you can't, like, if, and even if you post them, like, they aren't seen in certain countries and things like that. Ethan Klein posted, our podcast channel has zero ads and the monetization option has disappeared. Spill Sesh posted any updates and YouTube, this is 33 minutes ago, said, confirming we're working on a fix right now. We'll reply to the tweet as soon as we know more. And there's a lot of people on here that are saying stuff about what's going on with it. A lot of people are being affected by this. Um, like I saw this guy, I don't know who this person is, but Team YouTube retweeted it. His name is Matt, and he, YouTuber guy, co-host of goon spc or something but he said hey team youtube can you check our dm thank you and they said thanks for letting us know confirming we're working on a fix and shared an update here so apparently i haven't read the update but i have this well the, the video is not even ready yet to be posted on my peter does stuff channel but when it's ready i'll post it so anyway last night um, I was watching, I watched Daily Alaska, and then I watched the first, part of the first episode of Friend of the Family, and I was kind of just kept on checking to see if my vlog had been fixed yet, and it still hadn't been fixed, even after the hour that I spent on um, talking to the support team for YouTube, which was pointless, because at the end of an hour, they told me that there was really nothing that they could do, and that they would email me within 24 hours, and then the email that they sent me in 24 hours... <laughs> was like here are all the things that you can do log out of your account log back in do this do that all the things that i had already done <laughs> so i was just like okay whatever it's like you know it, 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 we'll just post the vlog anyway and those people that can see it can see it and eventually it'll be fixed and i, I try you know i just am so i feel so blessed that i get to do this every day that i just don't worry about all that kind of stuff too much like i try to just think that eventually you know, like, I, I've seen so many people get frantic about this stuff that I'm just like, I don't go there anymore. You know, it's like, it'll eventually get fixed or it won't. <laughs> and then you'll just figure out another solution, I guess, right? You'll do something else. But, um, so anyway, I just, I ended up posting it at like, I think it was like two o'clock in the morning. That was like when I got done talking to, well, I was watching. So I got off the, I got done. Alex went to bed at like 1.30. Then I watched Daily Alaska. I must have started Daily Alaska like 15 minutes before he went to bed. That's the new show with Hillary Swank on NBC or ABC. And then I watched it on Hulu last night. And then at 2 o'clock I posted the vlog. I, and it still wasn't like fixed. But anyway, I was just like, whatever. I'm going to watch this and I'm going to go to bed and I'll wake up. And I woke up and it was fixed. But then it was another channel. I was like, what is going on here, YouTube? And then somebody texted me and they were like, did you see that YouTube, like, it, like people are complaining about this on YouTube. It's a lot of people. It's not, you know, just you. Because I was like, okay, maybe it's just my channel. Or something. So anyway, it's whatever. It'll figure itself out or they'll fix it or whatever. But um, so I watched last night Daily Alaska with Hillary Swank. So the premise of the show, with, without ruining it for you, and I've only seen one episode, so I can't ruin it, for, ruin it for you, is that she's like this major investigative reporter that works for this newspaper, whatever, in New York City that does like these deep dive investigations. And she's like paid her dues over the last so many years. And um, basically like her career is kind of ruined so she has no other alternative but to go work for this like small local newspaper in alaska which she doesn't want to do 
And she's kind of defiant and like really difficult and things like that. And so anyway, Hilary Swank is fantastic in this role. Actually, I tweeted it out and a couple people were like, I was so bored with it. And I wasn't bored with it at all. In fact, it would be such a binge-worthy show. This is where I get frustrated with the shows not being out all at once because, like, this would be a show that, like, I would love to binge. I would love, 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 love to binge it. Um, but it, it's only, you know, one episode a week. So then I watched the first half of... Um, well, Alex, like, went to bed, went to bed, so I was sitting out here, and it was, like, I had on my sweatshirt and sweatpants and my Ugg boots and my coat, and it... It wasn't as cold as it sounds like it would be because I was like warm with all that stuff and toasty. I actually looked at a heater today when we were at Costco. There was a heater there for $89. And I said to Alex, I said, hold on, let me look at this heater. And he goes, what do you need a heater for? And I said, for the front porch. For when I'm vlogging out there and stuff. And he looked at me and he goes, what? I go, listen, a lot of people have recommended that I get a heater for my front porch, okay? And he goes, what? <laughs> I said, babe, I said a lot of people have recommended that I get a heater for the front porch, you know, so that when I'm sitting out there that if it's like cold, you know, he goes, that's so silly. <laughs> so anyway, I go, well, I can't vlog like inside while you're watching TV or you're sleeping or something. And then like if I go out there to watch a show or whatever. But anyway, I didn't end up buying the heater, but it was $89. It was a really nice heater. Um, so... But I didn't feel like, I was like standing in front of it and I didn't feel like it put off like a lot of heat. So anyway, so I um, watched half of the first episode of Friend of the Family. It's on Peacock. On the heels of just watching the documentary, I don't know that I'm really into watching the show, in all honesty. It's just such a weird story. And actually Jan Broberg, who is like who the story is about, who's, like, who it happened to, she, um, like, at the beginning of the show, she kind of introduces it, and she says, like, this is a real story, like, this happened to us, and this happened to me, and as bizarre as it sounds, you know, like, this is what happened, and this is, and so she, like, is co-signing, like, the show being made. It's very well done. Like, it's by the producers of Candy, which you can kind of tell because the show takes place in the 70s, like, um, the story is from, like, I think 74 to like 77 is when like this happened and like the costumes the hair the the scenes like everything looks like straight out of the 70s like it's unbelievable really and um the the guy that plays b this bob birchold guy i couldn't place him i was like the dad of jan broberg is played by colin hanks but it doesn't really look like him in the show. And Anna Panquin plays her mom. Um, but the guy that plays Bob Birchold, or B, who they call him, I was like, how do I know him? Like, he looks so familiar to me. And it said he was, like, in the White in White Lotus. And I was like, who was he in White Lotus? Like, I don't remember him in White Lotus. So, but I, he apparently was in that show. Um, so I watched that, and then it was, like, starting to get a little cold out here. So I was like, I'm going to go inside. And I'm going to get in bed and I'm going to watch a movie. So I went in bed, got in bed, and um, put my AirPods in and had a little Boo Radley right next to me. And I watched Halloween from 2018. Um, the one where Michael Myers... I mean, it's basically... I was look, watching it. I was like, it's so funny how like this is basically like the exact same story from the original. I mean, almost identical, right? Except for like Laurie Strode has become like the survivalist of the world. So, but it's basically Michael Myers, like, escapes from being transported from Smith's Grove. And, um, like, these reporters that are doing this podcast and all this kind of stuff. And then Lori Strode's trying to protect her daughter and granddaughter and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, so I watched that last night. I got to probably three-fourths of it until it got really scary. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I don't want to watch this anymore. I won't fall asleep. But I was, like, wired for sound. I, like, at that point, I was like, I can't... Now I'm, like, wired. I can't fall asleep. So I went downstairs, and I cut up some brie cheese and um, got some Pringles, and then I had, like, my apple fritter for, <laughs> from <laughs> um, Krispy Kreme, and I put it all on a plate with a little glass of water and a little treat tray. 
and I started watching, what was I watching on YouTube? Oh, I was watching like drag, pa drag pageant videos on YouTube, so I watched those. Oh, and then I started watching, well here I can tell you, because um, I can just go into my library. Okay, so here you can see, you can pull it up right here. Sasha Velour, um, against uh, Shea Coulee when she did this so emotional video where she pulls off the wig and she has the rose petals underneath it. And then, um, if you've never seen this, this is like a really great version of it. So at Nightgowns, which is like this drag show in, I think it's Los Angeles, I think Sasha Velour is the one in charge of it. Um, she, this is from five years ago. She does, you can put in Nightgown, Sasha Velour, So Emotional, and it comes up. And she does, um, so I was watching that. That was really great. So anyway, let's go in here and see my history. Untucked's Most Explosive Fights. That's from Untucked from RuPaul's Drag Race. I watched that. Oh, that was 41 minutes. I was like, no wonder. Like, I sat down there and I was like, I looked at the clock and I was like, how is it so late? <laughs> Said it was 41 minutes long. And then I watched Happy Birthday Raquel Scott. That was the drag thing. That was 7 minutes and 12 seconds. Top 20 greatest RuPaul's Drag Race um, lip syncs. That was 21 minutes. So, and then I watched the Sasha Velour things. <clears throat> so, yeah, I sat down there for like an hour. And then I went back upstairs. I think I watched maybe like 10 more minutes of Halloween and I was like, okay, try to go to bed. And I tossed and I turned and I was like, laid on my side, then laid on my back, and then laid on my side, and then laid on my stomach, and then laid on my side, and I could not fall asleep, you guys, and save my life last night. Um, so, anyway. That was my night last night, and then woke up, and yeah, and they got a bunch of stuff done today and hung out with Alex, and we just hung out and had a good day together, and then he was like, are you sure you don't want to go to the Dead Mouse concert? And I was like, he's like, I still have a ticket, and I was like, are you sure? <laughs> like, not are you sure, are you serious? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm very serious that I don't want to go in 45 degree weather to go stand outside at a concert now. I like Dead Mouse, but I've seen him enough that like I don't need to go in this and see it. If it was like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of somebody that I would, well, I mean it would take somebody that I really love to stand out in a cold like this. Um, but if it was inside, I would have gone. And there's enough people that I know that are going that it would be fun but I kind of also wanted to just have kind of like a relaxing night around the house I really just wanted to kind of watch some scary movies although I'm kind of afraid to watch some of these movies because I'm like some of the movies that I've written down um I'm like are so maybe scary that I don't know the, uh, that All Hallows Eve is on YouTube you can watch it on YouTube so I was like I could watch that um I'll probably finish that Friend of the Family inside and watch that um and make something for dinner Maybe I'll watch Game Show Network. Maybe Boo Radley and I will get into bed and then we'll watch the horror movies and get all scared together. <laughs> Little Boo Radley. He already ate his dinner. And he was howling when Alex left because he didn't want Alex to leave. He's like a little baby anymore. It's so funny. Like when Alex leaves in the morning or when Alex leaves, you know, anytime he'll be like, oh, he gets like so upset. He's <laughs> so funny. And then we come in through the door, like, as soon as we come inside, he's, like, barking down in his... Like, we were not gone that long today at all. I mean, less than an hour to Costco and Fresh Time and Starbucks. And when we came through the door, I mean, you would have thought that he had been in there for 10 hours. And we came in, and he was, like, down in his house. He was like... Oh, 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 oh. And then he comes, like, running upstairs, and he's, like, all, like, being so cute and stuff. He's so funny. He, like, runs circles around, like, through the kitchen, living room, dining room, kitchen, living room, dining room, kitchen. It's so funny. And then Alex, like, runs after him, and then he gets even more hyped up. And... Aw, little, little pup. He's such a good boy. So, anyway... That's about my day. That's about my life. Don't have much more to share than that. Yeah, I don't know what like scary movie I want to watch. That's, but I also want to watch a movie that's kind of like Halloween-ish. Like I don't know that I want to watch like Friday the 13th. 
Like, I want to watch something that's more like Halloween. What's that one movie? I should just look up, like, Halloween movies. I actually pulled up, right before I got on here, another quiz to ask me questions to get to know me. I thought that might be kind of fun. <laughs> I don't know why I just remember. Well, I do, I do know why, because I said to get to know me. But anyway, my friend in high school... <laughs> Should I tell this story? She worked um, at a Burger King. And so she was like 18 at the time. Maybe because she was a year ahead of us. So maybe it was when we were, I think it was just when we were seniors, like after we had graduated. So she would have been 19. But she had this girl that she worked with, this friend that was like 22. And her name was Naomi. And they worked, they looked like identical. And so Naomi would like give her her like driver's license or gave her her driver's license or whatever. And so we would like beg our friends to go, or a friend to go into the grocery store and buy Boone's Farm, but she had to like buy a bottle for each of us. <laughs> and so, which is why we ended up calling ourselves, there was like four of us. It was like that girl, myself, and two of my other friends, the one girl that I was like friends with since the kindergarten. And like the four of us called ourselves the Red Wine Girls because we would each get like a bottle of red wine, or of Boone's Farm wine, and then, or Purple Passion. Do you guys remember? I mean, not each of that stuff will put you under. Do you remember that stuff? The two liters of Purple Passion. Oh my God, it was like Everclear and like Fruit Punch. But we would go somewhere and then we would drink the Boone's Farm wine and we would, we would sing that song, Red, Red Wine by UB40. Do you remember that? Anyway, we called ourselves the Red Wine Girls. So, but when we want, when our, that friend was with us and we wanted her to go buy us liquor, we would go, come on, Naomi, Naomi, don't you know me? We would always say that to her, Naomi, don't you know me? Because she had this, I, this ID that said like, Naomi, I don't know what her last name was, Smith or something. Look at me still like 30 some years later being worried about saying this when people are gonna like connect the dots of oh My friend worked at Burger King with Naomi Smith. I don't even know what her last name was <laughs> Okay, I don't even think I ever met Naomi Naomi who gave her ID 30 years ago to some girl out there you know? <laughs> So silly Red red wine I used to love that song so much red red wine I used to know all the words too. I probably would still know all the words if, what was I looking up? I was looking up something, now I don't remember. Oh, it doesn't matter. What was I looking up? Wiggle your toes and you'll remember. It doesn't matter. You know the other thing that I used to drink back in the day, this is so gross, is that Manischewitz. Do you guys remember that? It was like this like wine that they would drink for like, I think it was like for like Jewish holidays and things like that. I could be wrong, but like my friend got me hooked on it. My friend Erin, she got me hooked on it. And you could you would buy it in like the grocery aisle. And it was like $3 a bottle. It was, and it was kind of like this sweet wine. Do you guys remember that, Manischewitz? Oh my God. Anyway, what was I gonna look up? Well, I was gonna look up something, I don't know what it was, but I also, I had pulled up, um, I, I don't wanna stop the video and go back to see what I was gonna look, look up for, but I was gonna look up, or I was going to answer these questions, 100 getting to know you questions. This is gonna drive me crazy, wanting to know what I was gonna, Should I stop the camera and go back and look and see what I was gonna look up? Do you guys even care? <laughs> Are you listening to me? Are you answering my question? Red, red, what? What was I talking about? Okay, so my friend, she worked at Naomi, don't you know me? Fake ID, we're working at Burger King before that. I'm gonna have to go back and look this up and see what it is, because it's gonna drive me crazy. Hold on just a second. Okay, I was just gonna look up Halloween movies. Like, how could I not remember that? There's like a Halloween movie and it's like four parts or three parts. And it's like this one couple and they come home from a party or something. Like this is one part of it. And like, Melissa loves this movie. The, the uh, It's called like All Hallows Eve or something like that. Anyway, let's look up before I forget. Halloween movies. This will be interesting when it pulls up. Hellraiser. Is Hellraiser really a Halloween movie, though, I ask you? Thriller is about Halloween. I think it's called Trick or, I think Trick or Treat is the movie. Yeah, Trick or Treat is the one. Scream is not about Halloween. None of these are. Um, 
Good night, mommy. I've never heard of that one. Do you know what I haven't seen in forever? It's The Lost Boys. That might be a good movie to watch. I don't know that I've ever seen Halloween Town. Do I need to see that? I feel like maybe I have and like watched it in the background or something like that. I can't believe it doesn't have like a list of like 10 of the best movies for Halloween or something. Forty classic Halloween movies to watch for a scary evening. See, a lot of these aren't. Oh, something wicked this way comes. <gasps> I forgot about that movie. I used to love that movie when I was a kid. That movie was so good. They call these kids movies. Listen, some of these movies, they call them kids movies. The Watcher in the Woods. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Monster House. Something Wicked This Way Comes. Lady in White. I think that movie is a little scary for kids, honestly, but I watched it as a kid. Frank and Weenie, The Witches, Return to Oz, Ichabod, oh, yeah, um, Hocus Pocus, now Hocus Pocus 2, Halloween Town, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. I don't know if I've watched that or not. I feel like I downloaded it on some trip, and then I never ended up watching it. What is this one? Coraline. E.T. is not a Halloween movie, is it? Oh, they do. They go trick-or-treating, don't they? But I don't feel like just because they go trick-or-treating that makes it a Halloween movie. Or maybe it does. I don't know. <gasps> Poltergeist. Maybe I could watch Poltergeist tonight. Edward Scissorhands. I went to ghoul. I went ghoul. <laughs> ghoul school. I went to um, junior high with this girl. And I don't know how she got... I've told this story before. It was kind of like... Weirdly like fascinated with her when she was in junior high and she and this other girl had like that still lives here like they had like really cool style and they were just like super unique but anyway we went to junior high like sixth through ninth grade and after ninth grade I remember this girl was in a typing class with me and we both sat in the very back of class and we were like the best typers in class. My mom always wanted me to take typing because she said, my grandma that was a bookkeeper, she said, you know, if you can type really fast or you can type really well, then that's always something to fall back on. Like your grandma, like she's always had a job in bookkeeping, which I think back on now, you know, with like knowing what I know about my grandma having gone to prison, which I think is really interesting that my mom would make that recommendation. But I remember that this girl would sit next to me, right, in class. And she always wore, I remember like white leggings that would come to like her ankles. And then she would wear like, like, ke like those Ked shoes with like no laces in it. And then she would always wear like a jean skirt and like some like big hoodie or something like she didn't dress up a lot but i remember like this is like ninth grade you guys so what are we like 13 14 and she carried like so if this was 13 or 14 i was born in 72 so that means like 82 83 84 85 86 this would have been 86 87 she carried a louis vuitton purse at like 14 years old and had a rolex watch i don't know how i remember that but i was kind of like thought i just she moved here from somewhere else and i was real fascinated with her and i remember that and she would always read these really like bizarre books and i remember she read like and i had never heard about this person before um, I remember asking my mom about her because my mom said, oh, she lived here in Indianapolis, and I didn't know that. Not this girl, but um, she, re she was reading um, the autobiography of Frances Farmer, and so I can remember asking my mom, like, who's Frances Farmer? And she said, oh, she lived here in Indianapolis, and then she, on the way to church, would show me, like, where her house was, because it's in Broderpool kind of close to where my mom grew up and it's like the Hollywood house that Francis Farmer lived in. Anyway, and then I saw the movie Francis and all this kind of stuff. But this girl, she ended up, after ninth grade, her friend ended up going to a private school here in town and, and it's like a really sweet woman today. I don't know anything about this other girl, what happened to her. But she ended up going, I think, to a boarding school or something and became friends with like Winona Ryder and she ended up being in both uh, uh, Edward Scissorhands and Reality Bites. I remember her coming back, like, when we were in high school. She was, like, real popular and stuff, like, super into, like, going to parties and whatever. I, like, 
I wasn't on that level, so I didn't know her, or I didn't interact with her. I don't think she would have even known who I was or anything other than, like, I sat next to her. I remember one time she, because this girl rode my bus, the other, the friend, I remember one time, like, they, like, rode the bus together with me or something, and I, but that was, like, the only time that, like, anyway. I remember she came back, like, the next year or something and brought a friend with her and, like, I was like, oh my god, that's so-and-so. Like, I used to, like, thought she was so cool and whatever. Anyway, I have no idea where she's at today, but, yeah, she was in Edward Scissorhands and Reality Vice. She had, like, speaking parts in those movies, so... It was interesting. I was watching, um, I never finished watching it. I was watching that, um, Punky Brewster documentary. I don't know what it was on. Maybe on Hulu or something like that. Um, I always worry about, like, talking about people, like, in, you know, that I knew, like, in my past or my history, like, Naomi, don't you know me? And I'm like, it, this is my story. <laughs> like, this is my truth of people that I've met in my life. There's like, why should I be weird about telling people about it? I don't know. But, um, what was I going <sighs> to... I cannot remember anything today. What was I just going to say? I'm not stopping the camera again. <laughs> or am I? <laughs> what was I just going to look up? I was just going to look up something. Oh my God. Um, shoot, I don't know. Why is this happening to me today? Do you believe in life after love? What was I thinking? What was I just talking about? Well, because this is the reason I keep on getting sidetracked is because I want to talk about these questions that I had pulled up. But then I'm like, well, why talk about these questions if I don't need to? I'm going to stop this again and see what I was going to look up. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I think I'm forgetting these things because it's such stupid things that I'm looking up. I was looking up the Punky Brewster documentary, and I don't, to be honest with you, it's, it's called something like, it's something to do with her age or something like that. Hold on a second. Punky Brewster. I don't even know what her name is, that girl. Documentary. Hold on a second. I can't remember what her name is. Kid 90 is what it's called. It's on Peacock. Soleil Moon Fry. So, I started watching it. I thought it would be, like, really super interesting. It honestly was just really, really sad. But what it was about was all of those child actors, like, in the 90s, like Soleil Moon Fry, and I think I talked about it on here, actually, because I was watching it. Did I finish it? I don't think I finished it. It just was really sad. It had, like, the Corys on there, like, Corey Haim and Corey Feldman, I feel like. And then it had, like, Soleil Moon Fry from Punky Brewster, and then... Like, it was really sad because, like, she became, like, like really big-breasted, like, as she, like, matured into adulthood, you know? Like, things happen, right, as we grow up. And then she no longer could be, like, this persona of, like, Punky Brewster. It, like, talks about them, like, really, like, aging out of being child stars, and it's really kind of sad, a lot of it, honestly. And, um, hey. How are you? Good, how are you doing? And so, um... But it has, like, all of these people in there that, like, and they were, like, all friends at that time. Like, and they said that she had, like, this video camera, and she always carried this video camera with her. And so she turned it into a documentary called Kid 90. And I started watching it. I think it, I just don't think it was super interesting, honestly. <laughs> like, after I started watching it a little bit. Like, it would be interesting to you, like... The people that were in it, like, I think it would be really interesting to them because they lived it. But, like, if just to watch it, like, there were s some scenes when they're, like, partying, you know, drinking and smoking cigarettes and all that kind of stuff that's kind of like, oh, so we had this one impression of, like, the child stars and then there's, like, this other impression. I think the other thing that was interesting to me in watching it, if I remember, was that there were, like, some people that, I can't remember, like, who who was in it. I should probably look it up and see before I forget what I'm looking up. But um, there were some people, I feel like like Brad Pitt might have even been in it. There were some people that were pretty big in it. And then to... Stephen Dorff was in it, was in it Balthazar Getty. 
some of these people, I don't even know who they are. I guess the Corey Haim and Corey Feldman weren't in it. Brian Austin Green, David Arquette. There's like tons of people in this, you guys. Um, Michael Rappaport, Freddie Prince Jr., Sarah Gil. Oh, Sarah Gilbert was in it. I remember that. But like, what's interesting is in seeing a lot of this is that like some of these smaller child stars would be hanging out with some of these like people that ended up becoming really rather famous and they were all like really friends at that time and I kind of always wonder like that with Hollywood it's like you know before you win the Oscar <laughs> before you are blessed to do the role like when you think about like since I'm talking about like Daily Alaska when you're like a Hillary Swank before you have been become blessed enough to do like a Boys Don't Cry right and you don't really, like, you haven't been taken seriously in Hollywood. And then you do, like, a film like Boys Don't Cry, and you win an Academy Award, and you're all of a sudden shot to stardom, and you're getting calls all the time, and, you know, like, you were making, let's say, not good salary, and you couldn't even get your SAG card, and then all of a sudden, it's like you're getting all of these, you know, uh, scripts sent your way, and all of a sudden you can request a certain amount of money, and then, but you were hanging out with all these people that were lesser known actors. And I, and I kind of wonder, like, at that point, like, do they still hang out and are they still friends and things like that, you know? One of the things that I love watching, I've watched it a couple times now, is um, it's the document. it's not the documentary, it's not a documentary. Well, kind of it is, but it's like the after show to Schitt's Creek when they talk about like the fat the last week of filming Schitt's Creek and they show like how they all sat around and they read the very last like week or day of filming and all that kind of stuff but they ask each cast member like how they got cast in the role and it's really interesting when you hear them because there's like the one woman that ended up playing the part of I can't think of his name but the mayor's wife who I love, I think her name's Joyce in the show, but she um, said that she was getting ready to go work at PetSmart or Home Depot or something like that. And then she got cast in the role and she was like, I didn't even expect this. And then other people were reached out to and things like that, you know, and you think like, just in, it's like, I think that's kind of like always the allure of Hollywood that you never know. Like, I mean, to this day, it's like, I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm 50 years old, I could still win an Academy Award, you never know. I mean, you hear people all the time, right, that are like, all of a sudden, it's just like somebody sees something above them. I mean, somebody could just be watching, like, a vlog at, you know, a family member's house and be, like, a director from Hollywood and be like, who is that guy? Like, I like him. Like, I want to put him in this film that I'm doing, right? And then, like, I'm in some supporting role in some very dramatic film, and then next year, I'm winning an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, and then I'm shot to stardom and... Like, it's going to happen. It could, though. It could. And I think that's always, like, when we talk about this, like, Hollywood dream, right? You know, I think that's, like, why people move to Hollywood and, and why they go after their dreams and why they, you know, are starving artists and starving, you know, job, doing all these jobs where they're, like, not making a lot of money and they're going on all these auditions because you never know, right? Like, you never know. And that's always, like, the dream out there. Or with, like, New York and on Broadway and things like that. I have a lot of uh, mad respect for people that really work the grind as not just as actors and actresses either, but as artists, I have lots of friends of mine that have really like, I mean, for years on end and have some of them have never been financially successful off of it or had any like great breaks or anything like that. You know, they've done a few things here and there that, you know, it's like kind of cool. It's like, oh, I have this friend that like was in this movie or I have a friend that was like in this or whatever. But like very few do I have, you know, that I've, that I've known in my 50 years of being here. And like a couple of my friends have worked really, really hard at like being in New York City to be in plays and Broadway and whatever. And they've been in a lot of shows. They've been in a lot of chorus, like lines in the background. They've been in a lot of like non-talking parts just to continue to follow their dreams, you know? And I really, like, highly respect that. Whatever your dream is, you know? Your dream doesn't have to be even that. It's like, you know, I think getting up every... It's like my neighbor, she was just out here two seconds ago. It's like, you know, her dream is to have the most beautiful garden in the neighborhood, and she works on it every single day. And I, like, mad respect that grind of doing something that you love. I love YouTube, you know? It's like people... I, I just had a friend of mine say this to me today on YouTube. He was like, um... And... and 
I, I understand that people like, you know, there are a lot of people out there that post like every two to three weeks and whatever, but he was like, how do you post like every day? And I was like, you know, there are a lot of days that I take days off, you know? Um, another friend of mine that I was talking to was like, like, that does post a lot, was like, oh, you take days off and whatever, and I do. I take days off now, I allow myself to do that. But when I wake up, I think to myself sometimes, you are so blessed to have the opportunity that you have this, I hate to say platform, that sounds so Miss America, Miss America, but you have this platform, oh, Miss USA drama, can we talk about that? Speaking of the fact that, you know, Alex and I, like one of our dear friends that was, I think she placed six at Miss USA, she married us. So she was Miss Indiana 2008. And then our other friend was that was at our wedding, she was Miss USA or Miss Indiana 2009. And she texted me and she said, do you see all this drama going down about Miss USA? So anyway, um, but you know, like uh, not to have like this Miss America answer, thank God I remember what I was talking about, not to have this Miss America answer um, about all of it, but it's like, and say the word platform, but when I wake up every single day and I think to myself, you are so blessed to have this platform that there are people out there, no matter if it's 100, 100 is a lot of people. Like I can remember being on booktube and being like 100 people were watching my videos and I was like, oh my God, there's 100 people out there that I don't know that are watching my videos that I have never met that are watching 100 people. Like that was like just, I mean, it was extraordinary to me, right? And so like when you think about it on the scale of like 500 or 1,000 or 20,000 or, you know, 100,000 or 2 million for some of these people out there, right? Like, just imagine that. Imagine like 2 million people watching your videos. And this is where like I really struggle with a lot of YouTubers that take it for granted and want to complain about like Jaclyn Hill wanting to complain about like nobody's watching my girl, you're getting 70 to 100,000 views on a reel within a couple of hours. 70 to 100,000 people. That's like three Lady Gaga concerts. Like, let's just put this in perspective, really. You know, and it's like you, so when I wake up, I'm like, oh, I'm so blessed that I have this platform that I can do a haul video or a review of crumble cookies or, you know, Krispy Kreme, or I can sit down and vlog and talk to people just about what's going on in my day. And you know, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I take that opportunity? You know what I mean? It's like, and for me, I very much see it like if it was like an actor, you know, that was on Broadway that somebody said, okay, I'm going to offer you a part in Les Mis and it's not a talking piece, but it's, a, you know, it's a singing piece and you get to be in every scene and it's like, why would you not do that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, just to be part of that, the, the, the opportunity, you know, I just, you know, I don't get it sometimes. Like, um... And that's what it is for me. I just, and maybe it's because I'm older, you know, maybe it is because I'm older. And, um, and when you get a little bit older, you realize that you don't take the opportunities as much for granted as you did when you were younger. You know, like I can remember people like opportunities would come my way and I would think, Oh, do I really want to do that? You know, like I used to be asked to speak a lot. Um, in my younger years about my recovery. You know, I'm talking about like three to five years, 10 years, you know, speak at all different things um, about being in recovery and not just being in recovery, but like sharing my story of addiction and recovery to, you know, like whatever, to all different kinds of organizations and like, and giving hope and sharing that, you know, people can get sober too. And, and I think also just to, for people to see that addicts and alcoholics are just normal people too. And I think to myself, you know, like so many of those, because, you know, it, what we know is that um, when we're asked to do something in recovery, we do it. And so I did do those things, right? And I'm really happy that I did in retrospect because I don't know that, you know, like where the seed might have been planted. But I can remember sometimes like going to those things and being like, God, I'm so tired today. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, I look back on that and I feel like, God, I feel so blessed that I got asked to do those things. I don't get asked to do a lot of things anymore, you know? I, I don't really, you know, I don't get tons of opportunities anymore the way that I, I did in my youth about things. And that's okay, you know? Like, I, I feel very blessed for the life that I have, but when you get asked to do something that's kind of cool or really neat, you know? Don't think on it too long. Don't sit on it too long. You know, jump at that opportunity because you don't know. I mean, there's not gonna, there's might come a day where there's just not a, tons and tons of opportunities, you know, whatever. So 
it's like when you know she was asked to be like in charge of like the landscaping committee where they go around and they help people like you know whatever and then like let's say if like I don't want my hostas anymore and somebody does and they'll like take them and divide them because they know what they're doing and she like jumped at that opportunity and I think that's so cool that she did that because this is something that she really loves is plants you know so now she gets to do something and help out in the neighborhood and all that kind of stuff so yeah What's the saying? When opportunity meets desire, you know, I think that's the other thing too, right? It's like, <laughs> but as you get older, <laughs> you have a lot more desire and a lot less opportunities. And so opportunity doesn't meet desire maybe as often as it used to when you were younger. I don't know. I look back to on my life sometimes and sometimes the opportunities that I had I think fear stood in the way of a lot of it, you know, like I can, I've been asked to like travel places or visit people and to travel so many times in my life. And I can remember being like, like, I don't know, I'm kind of scared to fly to Europe by myself or fly here by myself. And, you know, I'm, and so I didn't, I didn't do that, you know? And, um, I don't know, maybe in retrospect, I should have done a few more of those things. Um, but I've had, you know, an amazing life and I've gotten to see and do and participate in a lot. And, um, I've got to see and, and do so many cool things, you know? And I think that is because I did, you know, show up to so much of, of what was offered to me. I think that's one of the things with my social anxiety that I've really like learned is that when, um, I know people are going to be like, well, you were just asked to go to see Dead Mouse tonight and you didn't go. Well, okay, it's 45 degrees. Well, it's going to be 45 degrees here very soon. And I've seen Dead Mouse several times, so I don't need to do that tonight. Plus, my husband can go out and have a fun night with his girlfriends and I can watch a movie at home. Like, it's, it's good for us to have, you know, some nights to ourselves where we do different things. But anyway, you know, um, today I try to be more spontaneous and um, enjoy things, you know, that... Uh, Maybe like in the past, I wouldn't. Like when, you know, somebody asks me to go do this or do that or whatever, you know, it's like, so, yeah. I think you have to. Is the cricket gone? Is the, cr is the cricket gone? <laughs> it was so funny because I was, I think I was talking like earlier in the day, the other day, and somebody said, I can't hear the cricket after Peter was complaining about the cricket the other day or whatever. And now it's later, so I wonder, well, there was a frost last night. Oh, I hope the little cricket didn't, didn't go off to never, never land. I hope the cricket's still around. Just not loud. <laughs> Just not loud. Okay, I'm going to get off here now. I'm going to do a very quick exit tonight. So, thank you guys for hanging out on the front porch with me. This has been really fun, and I've had a good time, and I'm going to go inside and, I don't know, maybe make some garlic and mashed potatoes or something. And um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Saturday, and I love you guys so much. Remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want. Two, practice practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell anyone. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. You might just be changing their day for the better and making them much happier. And um, like I said, thanks for hanging out with me. I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place on front porch time, like Diane says. And I love you guys and I'll see you then. Bye. Love you.